The next challenge is to not get the coronavirus. I'm going to head off to Spain for a week, come back, and still be healthy. That's the goal at least. I apologize if this is an insensitive video. It should be humorous and lighthearted without being insensitive. But don't know what's going to happen in the next week around the world, so we'll see. I'm going to start now, head off to the airport. Step one is complete. I have gotten to the airport. I've forgotten not to touch things six times so far. Not a good start. I survived the plane ride. I had an open seat next to me. Nobody was really coughing. So I think that was safe. The metro was also pretty empty. Although there were a lot more people wearing gloves and face masks. I got bored, so I started walk I got off the metro, started walking, going to El Retiro, the park, because germs can't live in nice fresh air. So it's still it's 9 a.m. the city's just now waking up. So I get to the park before the germs wake up. I survived the plane ride from Madrid to Malaga. It was very crowded. I blame the bikers in front of me if I get sick. Now for my first bus ride of the trip. I survived the bus. It wasn't very crowded, and most of the people I figure had just come from the same plane that I did, so no big deal. But when I get to my hotel room, I see that one of those virus ships has beat me to it, and they're already here. So, when I'm out and about, I gotta make sure to look out for people who look like they just came off a boat and not touch anything they touch. Day two of my trip, and last night, Trump just declared that people can't travel from Europe back to America. Uh, so, it doesn't apply to me since I'm a U.S. citizen, but it does um, put some uncertainty out there because... Obviously, things are getting more serious. So I'm sitting in this nice garden with honeysuckle trees. I'd only ever seen honeysuckle bushes before, but it smells wonderful. So, a little bit to brighten my mood here. So it's currently nighttime, still on the second day. I've had all day to think about the news from this morning, and I really don't know. The only thing that I know for sure is that the humor has dropped uh, and it's becoming more of a serious situation I don't know, here, here was the plan it was two nights in Malaga and then a bus ride to Gibraltar two nights in Gibraltar bus ride back to Malaga another three nights here and then a flight home followed by a 14 day quarantine quarantine this I was still debating it when I left but then earlier today I was like no I'll do that I can just I live alone I can try to go 14 days without seeing another person um, so that brings the question of if you're willing to do the warranty and you, the quarantine and I think it's an okay idea. Why would I wait until I got home to do it? Right? If I got the disease, I would, if I thought I had it, or might have it, I should start it as soon as possible. Which would be now. So I would not go to Gibraltar. I'd find another hotel to spend two nights in, in Malaga. And I would spend all day in my hotel room, just like I would if I was in quarantine at home. So, why wouldn't I be doing that? It's the question, because that's what you should be doing, ethically, to not spread it around to other people, right? But that brings the question of, I mean, the rest of the world hasn't sort of demanded that. Italy, they're, it's basically like that from what I've heard, and I think it's being considered in Madrid now from, well, that's just rumor. I flew through Madrid, so that's why I'm reading about that, 
but the rest of the United States hasn't shut down, even though there are a bunch of cases of it in the United States, which even is, uh, it brings up the, I, the day I left the States, there was a reported case of it in my hometown. So shouldn't I go in quarantine as soon as I got here because I might have brought the disease over? So I don't know. There's just all the probabilities are very hard to predict. They're impossible to predict. So it leaves a lot of confusion on my part. I feel like the states' response to it is very different from other countries. I don't know which one I'm supposed to follow. Uh, all of my events are still scheduled. I was going to see a snooker tournament in Gibraltar, or the bus to get there is still there. So, if the country doesn't shut it down, they think it's okay if I go there, right? Very difficult. I still don't know what I'm going to do as of tomorrow. I will decide tomorrow morning, I guess, when push comes to shove, when I need to either get on a bus or get a hotel. We'll see if there's any additional news from evening time in the United States when I wake up tomorrow. But until then, ah, oh, the moon is just rising. I've been waiting for this all night. I'm going to go to sleep. It is a nice, sunny, beautiful day in Malaga, Spain. This morning I got a text saying that my flight from Madrid to Philadelphia was cancelled. Uh, and I've been on call with AA ever since. That's for the last four hours. And they have not answered. So I think it is time to give up on the plans. I'm going to go to the Malaga airport and try to talk to someone in person. Hopefully they can rebook me. Hopefully my Spanish and their English is good enough to rebook me. We'll see. Um, I don't plan on going to Gibraltar today. But it is what it is. Still don't think I have the virus, but es posible, es posible que estoy infectado. No sé. We'll see what happens at the airport. The bus ride to the airport was pretty empty. It was a double length bus. And I had the entire back section myself. So I think I did a good job of avoiding the virus there. Then I had to wait in line for an hour where people were not practicing good social distancing. So I'm making sure not to touch the back of my neck in case there's any respiration droplets. But I am on my way to Madrid tonight. The flight to Madrid was super full, but nobody's coughing, so I think I'm good. I got a pretty much empty metro here as I go to my hotel in Madrid. Staying safe, hanging out in the corner. There is a security guard in front in the grocery store, like checking people as they walk in, I guess. And that was the most crowded I've ever seen a store in Spain. So, something's definitely up. I got the last loaf of bread and a thing of pineapple juice. <laughs> I'm super surprised that they ran out of bread. Even considering like there's a rush from the grocery store, Spain always has a whole wall full of bread. But yeah, that's gonna be my dinner for tonight. I think the best way to avoid the virus is to eat foods that give you no sustenance but keep you from feeling hungry. So that's the plan I'm going with. I think it's safe to say this hotel is a little bit underbooked, which is good because that means there's no coronavirus here. They've also been disinfecting like, everything. There's someone walking around constantly doing it. <clears throat> I'm having nice Spanish style American quantities of breakfast, my favorite thing. And then I'm going to go on the hopefully empty metro to a hopefully empty plane to go and infect three different American airports. So I missed my flight. 
I went to the wrong, I went to Iberia's check-in and then I went to a different Iberia check-in line and then they said go to American but you totally missed it. So American rebooked me for tomorrow. I'm going to spend another day in an airport, public transportation and hotel. Now, I know what you're thinking, for someone who supposedly doesn't want to get the virus, you're doing a lot of things that are going to get you the virus in this video. And that's true. But it's not because I'm not trying, it's because I'm very stupid. I don't adapt well to change, and I just do stupid things. Which is one of the reasons why I changed my flight to Saturday instead of Wednesday. Which is to give me more time to get home, because I might need it, because I do stupid things. So, they still had some flights tomorrow. Instead of going, today I was going to go Madrid to JFK to Charlotte to Philly. Tomorrow I get to go from Madrid to Dallas to Philly. So, one less airport. And I get home at 8 instead of midnight. So I guess that's good. The downside is I get to spend another day in a city that is currently shut down because of the coronavirus. So, I expect to see very few people in the metro. I'm getting better at not touching things. Um, that's about it. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but everyone is out on their balconies clapping and uh, shouting support for Spain. The president just spoke for an hour on TV. My Spanish not 100% so I didn't understand at all, but I obviously understood his tone, taking it very serious, very grave. Uh, there's a 15 day restriction on all travel where you can travel for work, to go to the grocery store, to go to the pharmacy, or to care for old people. Um, and that's it. Everything else you're supposed to stay in your house. And spoke a lot of just about how as a community we need to come together to do this. And I guess that's why everyone's clapping together as a community. Um, cool experience. Something that would rarely happen in the United States. Um, as far as personal as far as I'm concerned, I still don't have the virus. So, I'm still winning my challenge. The airport is super empty, except for the line to check your baggage with American. But luckily I don't have a suitcase, so I got my boarding pass. Both my flights today are pretty much full, it looked like, but I did get a window seat. So hopefully I'll just be able to keep my head to the window, breathing that fresh air, not get sick. The entire additional screening thing was I filled out this form right here. It basically says the days I was in Spain. Or I don't even know if I wrote that I was in Spain in it. I gave it to a CDC guy outside of the plane. It went like this. At least I don't have that. How are you today, sir? No fever, chills, anything like that? No. Good job. You've not been to mainland China or Iran? No. Good job. Have a great day, okay? Thank you, too. And he initialed it, wrote that I didn't look sick. My plane's over here. Oh, it's right here. Um, wrote that I didn't look sick and then gave it back to me and I gave it to the guy at customs and that was it so I definitely could have done that in Philly super annoying and plane ride was okay I definitely was biting my nails a little bit so hopefully they wipe down that seat after me otherwise if I have the virus definitely give it to whoever's sitting there after me uh, but my next flight is not as full when I checked in this morning. I had an open seat next to me. We'll see what happens. But it boards in 10 minutes. I think I'm finally getting to go home and start my quarantine. 
now starting part one of my journey as my family delivers my car to me for a contactless transfer. So I misspoke there. It's not part one, obviously, as the length of this video can attest. It is part one of section quarantine. Uh, this is the last time I will be outside for a while. Hopefully. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it is the 15th, and tomorrow's the 16th is day one. I think it was two weeks was the recommended, which would be the 30th. Uh, but we'll see. The CDC guy didn't say anything about quarantine, so I'll see what the recommended length to do is. Day one, I feel fine. Day two, I still feel fine. I will be opening my door because my mother likes to worry and she got me <laughs> milk and eggs uh, because she doesn't want me to starve. So, temporary breach of quarantine. Day three, I felt fine. Day four, I feel fine. Day five, I'm going to feel fine. Day six, I've sniffled six times today. Could be the start. Day seven, I feel fine. Day eight, I feel fine. Day nine, I'm feeling fine. Day 10, I have a headache, but I'm fine. Day 11, I'm fine. Day 12, fine. Day 13, I feel fine. Day 14, I'm fine. It's now been 15 days since I last came into contact with another person, and I feel fine. So I think it's safe to say I did not get the virus. Traveled to Spain, did not get COVID-19. Challenge complete. Three weeks ago when I recorded the first video of this series, the headline of the day was that Spain had just doubled their cases from 500 to 1,000. Today, Spain's at 80,000, and the U.S. is at 160,000. So, pretty crazy how dramatic of a change that is. It's a crazy world. 